Center for the Ethiopian Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello students, I'm Gebra from Intellectual Schools International Branch. Uh, this is Chemistry Revision for Grade 12, the third lesson. So our lesson is about atomic structure and the periodic table. It's about atomic structure and the periodic table. You know, like this thing, it took almost 1,500 years to get the proper postulates. So, the uh, Dalton's atomic theory was the first written postulate in chemistry history. And in the postulate of Dalton's atomic theory, he mentioned the following main postulates. The first one is, Dalton said that all matter is made up of atoms which are tiny and indivisible particles. Or, Dalton says that atom is the smallest particle of a substance. The second postulate is all the atoms of an element have the same physical and chemical properties or they have the same size, mass and properties. The third postulate of Dalton atomic theory is atoms neither created nor destroyed. He believed that atoms cannot be created or they cannot be destroyed. The fourth postulate of Dalton's atomic theory is compounds are formed when the atoms of different elements combine with each other in a fixed or whole number ratios. Or compounds are formed when two or more than two elements combine together in a chemical process. The fifth postulate of Dalton atomic theory is atoms can be combined, separated, or rearranged via chemical reactions, not because of physical reactions, but because of their chemical reactions. Dalton's postulate theory were D2 3 laws, or his postulates were coming from three laws. Those three important laws are the law of conservation of mass, which says us the mass of the reactant and the mass of the product should be equal, or mass neither created or nor destroyed. His second law was law of definite proportion, and the third law was the law of multiple proportions. So, using these three laws, Dalton could be able to emphasize the postulates of Dalton atomic theory. Dalton was an ambitious scientist. He was really good. But in his postulates, in his postulates, he had limitations. Those limitations are, one, he doesn't account for the subatomic particles because Dalton thought that Atom is the smallest particle of a substance. This means he didn't know or he didn't consider the subatomic particles. The second limitation of Dalton atomic theory was he didn't account allotropes. He didn't know allotropes. The third one is isotopes. He didn't know isotopes. So this were the limitation of Dalton atomic theory. Yes, 
after Dalton's atomic theory, we got modern atomic theory. This modern atomic theory is really similar with Dalton's atomic theory, but this modern atomic theory, they rearrange the Dalton's atomic theory. So let us see what are the postulates of modern atomic theory. The first postulate of modern atomic theory is that atoms are the smallest particles of all elements that can take part in a chemical reaction. But they have subatomic particles like electron, proton, and neutron, but they are not taking place in the chemical reaction. The second one is an atom is divisible. Dalton atomic theory, he told us atom is indivisible. But the modern atomic theory states that atom is divisible. The third postulate is atoms of the same element may not be identical. This is what we call it the formation of isotopes. In isotopes, they have the same number of protons, but they have different number of neutrons, which means they have the same number of atomic number, but they have different number of atomic mass. But still, they are the same elements, but their atomic mass is different. Next postulate of modern atomic theory is atoms of the same element have identical chemical properties, but they may not have identical physical properties. Their physical properties might be different because of the existence of isotopes. Atoms of two or more elements combine in a simple whole number ratio to form a compound. So as you can see, modern atomic theory and Dalton atomic theory, they have similarities, but there are differences where the formation of the isotopes, the formation of allotropes, where the difference or the limitations. So after the postulates of modern atomic theory, after the theory states atom can be divisible, then scientists, they try to find out how it's happening. Then they found out they are subatomic particles. So they start to find out these subatomic particles. So the first subatomic particle to be found was electron. So now we are going to watch a video how electron was founded. It was here in Cambridge that the first clear evidence for smaller objects inside the atom was found. Many of the great scientists of history have walked these streets, and one of the greatest was J.J. Thompson, who became the director of this, the old Cavendish Laboratory. In 1896, Thompson had just got his hands on this new piece of kit. Now, it's essentially a particle accelerator. When this plate's heated, particles are emitted. They're accelerated by these electrodes. They pass through these two plates, across which you can apply a voltage, and they hit the end of the bulb here on a screen which glows so you can see the beam. Now this is a modern version of Thomson's apparatus. Again, we've got the particle accelerator and there's a screen in there so you can see the beam glow. What Thomson did was he varied the voltage across the plates and he measured the amount of bending as the voltage changed. That allows you to deduce the mass of the particles in the beams. Now the lightest known particle in Thomson's day was the hydrogen atom. But Thomson found from these measurements that the particles in this beam are almost 2,000 times lighter than hydrogen atoms. Thomson had discovered the first subatomic particle, the electron. The uh, electron owes its practical utility, utility to its smallness. It might apparently Shakespeare say my use is great because I am so small. The electron was the first discovery of a fundamental particle, and it is interesting to realize that more than 100 years later, the electron is still, to the best measurements we can do today, a fundamental letter of nature's alphabet. 
We can use electrons as ways to probe materials and look at the structure in electron microscopes or in big machines like this accelerator behind me. Pretty much all of, of everything we do in the, in the 21st century depends on understanding the properties of electrons. Thomson had discovered that the atom is not the fundamental building block of matter. There are smaller objects inside. So atoms could no longer be thought of as hard, indivisible spheres. But how did the electrons fit inside the atom? Thomson suggested that the atom was something like this muffin, with the negatively charged electrons embedded in a positive body. It would be a student of Thomson's that proved him wrong. Yes, as we saw from the video, electron was discovered by J.J. Thomson, and these electrons, they have a properties of the ray travels in a straight line. These rays, they were attracted by positively charged particles or by positive electrodes. They have both magnetic and electric properties. And the charge of electron was determined by millica. Millikan was J.J. Thompson's student. So using drop oil experiment, he could able to calculate the charge of electron because charge to mass ratio was discovered by J.J. Thompson. So having this mass to charge and multiplying by the charge of electron easily, we can find out the mass of electron. And the mass of electron is 9.19 times 10 to the power of minus 31 kg or 9.109 times 10 to the power of minus 28 gram. The second subatomic particle was nucleus. And now we are going to see how nucleus was discovered. Let us watch this video. The mystery of how the electrons fitted inside the atom was eventually solved here in Manchester, in this building in 1911, by Ernest Rutherford. Rutherford was, in my opinion, one of the first proper particle physicists because he used beams of particles as projectiles to explore the structure of matter. Now, of course, in Rutherford's day, there was no such thing as a particle accelerator. So he used the decay of radioactive elements to produce his beams of particles. This is Rutherford's original desk. And in fact, if you hunt around a little bit, you can detect traces of radioactivity a hundred years later. Rutherford asked two of his students, Hans Geiger and Ernest Marsden, to fire some alpha particles at a piece of thin gold foil and see what happened. So imagine these tennis balls are the alpha particles. Now if the atom were as Thomson had suggested, a kind of amorphous blob, then you'd expect the alpha particles to pass right through. And that's indeed what happened to most of them. But to their surprise, they found that around one in 8,000 bounced right back. After two years of puzzling over the meaning of these results, Rutherford realized that in order for the alpha particles to bounce back, they must hit something small and dense. So his new model of the atom was a bit like the solar system, with all the mass concentrated at the center and the electrons orbiting like planets around the sun. Today, we know that this picture isn't quite correct. Quantum mechanics tells us that we can't know precisely where the electrons are, but we can predict that they reside in distinct shells around the nucleus. Rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment was remarkably direct and simple, and it showed the nature of what the atomic structure is. By the way, the alpha particles bounced off the atom. He worked out where the positive charge of the atom lives. Rutherford had come to the astonishing conclusion that most of the atom, and therefore most of what we think of as ordinary matter, is in fact empty space. So if this apple were the atomic nucleus, 
the electrons would be a kilometre away. After discovering the nucleus, Rutherford continued doing experiments, firing particles at different targets to delve into the structure of the nucleus itself. By 1932, Rutherford and his colleague James Chadwick had found that the nucleus is made of two kinds of particles, positively charged protons and electrically neutral neutrons. The discovery in these experiments of neutrons and charged atoms of mass one has proved of great significance and importance and has given us a much clearer understanding of the actual structure of nuclei. Uh, dear students, this is the end of this lesson. So today we saw the postulates of Dalton atomy theory, the postulates of modern atomy theory, the discovery of subparticle atoms, electron and nucleus protons. Next, we are going to see the discovery of neutrons. Dear students, that's all for today. Uh, see you in the next lesson.